In your body. I'm driving along. Driving along. I'm singing a song. Singing a song. And I got my dick out. Got my dick out. I'm thinking about you. Thinking about you. I drank a six pack. Drank a six pack. Took my pants off. Took my pants off. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I see you, Charlie. All right. I see you, Charlie. Welcome, folks. Welcome, folks. Here we are. Everybody get up. We're good. There we go. Hey, folks. Welcome. Happy Memorial Day to everybody here. I'm about to bring on my favorite my favorite friend. I see you guys down in the chat already. Hi, Charlie Fisher. Hi, Eric. I feel like we're, we're really rolling here. Get a load of, uh, of a, a weekend where we're going to all have a good time barbecuing, eating, and having fun. And here tonight... Try to stump the joke, men. Let's win some prizes and have some fun. And we're here with my favorite friend and the guy who's the joke master man of himself, Jackie, the joke man, Martling. Here he comes. Come on up here, Jackie. Get up. There you go. Hello. Hey, Hello. now. What's going on? How you been? I'm going to my brand new joke before we go anywhere. There's, I am ready. I am ready. Two old ladies in Palm Beach sitting on a park bench. And the first one says, this has been the worst day I ever had here. The first day I ever had here, the other woman says, so what happened? She says, I was in the supermarket, and the young girl comes up to me and compliments me so much. Big, huge compliments on my alligator shoes. And the other woman says, so what's so bad? She says, I was wearing flip-flops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a nice clean start of the night as well, is it not? And, and I, at the same time, I don't know how I came across the same two old guys in Miami. Mm -hmm. Two old guys in Miami on the park bench. The first guy says, So your wife tells me you bought a metal detector and you're spending hours and hours every afternoon beach combing on the beach? He goes, Ah, what else is there to do in an afternoon? The other guy says, Me? I fuck your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you couldn't keep it too clean for too long. <laughs> I, could, I could not. I could not. I could hey, not. by the way, this sounds like the Jewish hour. You got two Jewish jokes in a row. I love it. Uh, why not? So, so uh, Stukowski and his wife. Okay, now we're switching up. Polish Jews. Stukowski and his wife are in front of the tomb of the unknown soldier. Huh? And Stukowski turns to his wife and says, his family must be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Come on. Get, let's now, hit, one disgusting one. one disgusting, three year old girl is jumping up and down in the bed, having a lot of fun because if, if she's in the room with her father, her father's packing to go away on a trip. And she says, Daddy, Daddy. And he turns and she's pointing out a couple fingers. And he bends over and he goes, oh, and he puts the fingers in his mouth. He goes, oh, gobble, gobble, gobble. I'm going to eat your fingers. Gobble, gobble. Rah, rah. And then he turns around and goes back to packing. And he hears her crying. And he turns around and says, what's the matter, honey? She says, daddy, what happened to my booger? <laughs> <laughs> like oh, it. nothing like a booger joke on Memorial Day. Why not? You I love it. I love it. I love it. What did you What did you do today? What did you do in this all of this uh, beautiful weather that we had come I on? I did not have a Memorial Day today, but yesterday I had my sister and my goddaughter, my niece, who's got twins, and her husband and my ex, my ex wife and me, and Bob, my ex wife and her boyfriend, and me and my beautiful girlfriend Barbara. We, I double date with my ex wife. People think well, we're I, I don't get that. How could you be adult enough to actually have we, people together like that? We were very good friends. <clears throat> long before and my friend Bill. Hey, you know, we had like maybe 10 people, 12 people, but we're all very, you know, like the patio where the barbecue is, it's big enough that everybody was very, very far apart so we could hang out. And uh, it was just, you know, it, it kills you though because they're, they're, they're nine month old twins, they, and, you know, boy and a girl and they're just You gorgeous, can't even. And you yeah. can't look at them, you know, it's like, yeah. oh. but, but it was, you know, it was great fun, great fun. I have a feeling those nine-year-old kids, were per my months-old uh, parents, would prefer to stay away from them anyway, wouldn't they? 
please. please. <laughs> this, this disease is the greatest thing that ever happened. <laughs> Little boy, you want some candy kind of thing. You know, they're opening the churches back up. I heard. Dawned to me, who is more thrilled by social distancing than the <laughs> altar boys? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's that's nasty. But you see, that's good. We do the Jewish jokes. You got to do the Catholic jokes too. You got to hit them both up there. I, I already told you a long time ago that I figured out the social distancing thing, right? I just walk around with my cock out, and anybody who could see it, they're too close. <laughs> they're too close. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife told me that she hopes I get COVID, so I have to wear a mask all the time. That's what she told me. <laughs> no, uh, I, I have to, that's who I got weird. here. It's very weird when somebody's not wearing one and you're wearing one. You know, it's it's very uncomfortable. But oh, I'm, God. I, I'm just so worried. You know, we can't talk about the disease. Let's talk about pussy. No, we got, no, just fun. But I will say I've got a bunch of videos from Staten Island and people inside the supermarket not wearing a mask turning into brawls. I have I put them on my Facebook page. It's hilarious. It, totally it, hilarious. It, yeah, you know, and, and yeah, that, that's good social distancing fighting. You know? Fine. Yeah, but that's they right. Show, you know, they show pictures of like pools and then people look like ants, you know, like, oh, God. Yeah, it's all nasty stuff. But hey, this is America. Anything goes. You know, it's a new world today. Social media is, is huge. Guess who's here today? Who's that? Well, we have, I mean, people are asking that. Uh, Daniel Miller, he's the, my stalker from uh, actually up in Canada and Quebec. I, I, and I want to show you, this is what he just said. Can you see that, Jackie? Oh, yeah, Jackie, did you get my message? Did you oh, get the yeah, get your message, you asshole? I sent you stuff. Did you get it yet? Oh, oh all the way to Canada? He's a, he used to be a postman, too. Oh, I'll just make believe. Okay, yeah, I hope yeah, it gets did there. Did you get it yet? Oh, remember that old joke? Oh, I forgot to stamp it, and then you stomp on the <laughs> Guess <laughs> no, who else is no, here today? I sent you stuff. I had a very good friend at Michigan State in 1967 named Danny Miller. So in his homage, I sent it to you. Uh, a friend of my, oh, here we go. Check this out. My friend, Frank Paris, says, my wife told me that my ego is as big as my prostate. Very good. Wow, that's good. That joke doesn't need anything. Just leave it like that and don't ever say it again. Works forever. Uh, Guess who's in the chat? Never mind the chat. Guess who's here with us live? It's Charlie Fisher. <laughs> this, hey, guys. Oh, wow. Ch Charlie, show them what you have there. You, 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 you see, there's, there's a nine-foot picture of howard stern behind charlie <laughs> yeah, you're actually right that's what's a bad promo well no that was from uh 1995 when leroy neiman did it and uh tim got it signed for me where's yours jackie he never why did one of you, you why don't you why don't you situate it so your head is in the middle of the screen like so you look <laughs> that was hey, hey, look at that. That, that that's perfect Stay there. <laughs> we could go pumpkin we picking right here. Charlie, we hey, Jackie, you're good. upside down on my screen. You're good. I'm upside down? No, yeah. you're, holding your, you're holding your device upside down, Charlie. No, because you're, you're the right way. No no way. I'm, let me go look. I'm going to look at that Facebook feed. I think he's jerking us here. Wait a minute. Come on. You're not no, kidding. No, me. no. It's, 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 there's every chance. That if that's how Charlie sees it, that's how it is. If that's the way it is? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, I see it. It looks perfect. It looks beautiful. Everything's perfect. Really? Hey, Charlie, that's really nice that you actually carry his book around. That is so nice. And you look like you need to shit. You look like you're starting to look like Fred Flintstone. You know, before. I, you know, going back oh, to work tomorrow. Book? So, yeah. 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 <laughs> Howard, I didn't see the book. Was he holding up my book? Oh, in the photo? In the, the photo that was behind you, Charlie? Yeah, was he yeah, holding? Yeah. yeah. You, you were holding up my book? Yeah. Why are you holding it upside down? <laughs> <laughs> that's very When's funny. the next one coming out? You know, I, I people people write to me and they say, hey, I really enjoyed your book. You know what I do? I send them all of the unpublished chapters. They freak out. The, the unpublished chapters are as long as the book. And there's so much great crap that there was, like, there was nothing about private parts. And, you know, there's so much that there's nothing about my 70s band or anything, even in the, even in the extra chapters. Like my high school friends like, it's like you didn't even go to high school. I said, you know, nobody's going to believe any of the crap anyway. So who knows? Now, see, I set the alarm, John. We got to tell Joe. So uh, it works for me. Doctor yeah. examines. He says, "My God, my friend, it's a piece of lettuce sticking out of your ass." He says, "Doc, that's just the tip of the iceberg." <laughs> <laughs> so guy goes to the library. He says, "Librarian, I need a book on suicide." She says, "Fuck you. You won't bring it back." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Two Jewish guys are on the Titanic, and the Titanic starts to sink, and the first Jewish guy starts to cry. And the second Jewish guy says, why are you crying? It's not your boat. <laughs> <laughs> and it's straight to the point. I like it. I like it. So two, two priests are driving along. A cop pulls them over, and the cop comes up to the window and says, Father, we're looking for a couple child molesters. And the priest looks at the other priest and turns back to the cop, and he says, We'll do it. <laughs> Charlie's like, that's, that's not joke. right. Best wife joke. The wife says, get out, get out, get the fuck out. As her husband's walking out the door, she says, I hope you die a slow, painful death. He says, so now you want me to stay? <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite jokes, by the way. That's one that, of my that, favorite. That, that, is, that is the perfect joke. That's we got, I, we, I hope we're not turning off the women again, though. But then again, you know, there are many funny women. There are. I mean, just think, if you think about it, we look at women's rights. Pretty fucking funny, isn't it? Well, I like their lefts, too. They're both like, they're, <laughs> they're both good. Hey, I got this. Uh, I, let's see. I got oh, Sandy Ellis. Is here. Hey, Sandy. There you are. Love it, John. Hi, hi Sandy. Oh, look at the mask on her. I love that mask. Sandy's a very funny female comic. Very funny. One of the, the greatest. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. She's wonderful. Yeah, that's that's her right there in the mask. That's a nice mask on Sandy. Also, I have a Jewish friend of mine here, Simka. Jackie, were you upset at the Howard stole the title of the book from your Come Again book? Well, that was either you're, you're, you're uh, typing with your elbow, but uh, my, my fourth CD was called Come Again, and they broke my balls about it for it being such a bad joke, but it was a great, it's a great uh, play on words because all the, it's my best-selling CD because it said it was the best of all the shows I did on the Rascals Comedy Hour. Oh, those are great. The best of Jackie was the best of those shows, but it sold more than any other because it was the best of. But the idea of Come Again was, it was, you know, we were recycling this, this, the uh, jokes from the Rascal shows, so it's called Come Again. And it's such an obvious, great play on words, and, and it's a little dirty and, you know, he, you know. It's this so funny the, that they accuse him of lifting it from me, which is, you know, like, come again. Like, like I invented the, the expression. The word, come again. You know? come again, right. But I'm just looking at, Simka looks very conservative. I'm surprised he's listening to your CDs. I'm, like, looking at that going, Simka looks like he's he should be, like, praying every day. He looks very conservative. I'm surprised. Simka sounds like the name of a fucking tiger. Schoenfeld. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Schoenfeld. Schoenfeld. By the way, I, I'm sure he's a big fan of yours. We, you know, we may need him if we need a loan. Oh, oh, is he a loan? A loan I have no loan idea. Arranger? I have no I idea. Know, I don't know the loan arranger. I only know Tano. Oh, yeah. I have, uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I also have somebody here that's name is Eric. He wants to come up, I believe, and tell a joke. Uh, we'll, we'll bring, I, I will bring him up. Let's see. Uh, by the way, John, we performed upstate in the summer for the bungalow kindly. You were well. Thank you, Simka. I will send you something for free in the mail as well. Uh, I don't remember doing it, but I'm sure if you say it was, if it was good, it was me. This this guy coming up, his name is Eric. Eric, I have. It seems that you muted yourself. If you want to unmute yourself, I'll bring you up here. So let me know, and I'll bring you up. Let's see if we can get Eric in there. Charlie, I'll pop you down here a second. Let's see, Eric, are you? Oh, that's Charlie. Eric, so are you? Charlie took down the picture. Howard, look at that. <laughs> There's Eric. Eric, unmute yourself, or do I have to unmute you? No, you have to unmute yourself. Are you there, Eric? The, Eric's gone. All right. See that, Charlie? I threw I threw you away, and the guy is already, already gone. You know what? He knew he couldn't follow Charlie. That's that. There you go. There you go. All right. So a girl goes to the guy in the college, and she says, Doc, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I keep finding postage stamps from Costa Rica in my vagina. The exams, he says, lady, those aren't postage stamps. Those are the stickers from bananas. Yeah, I knew that was. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the wife is on the deck. The wife is on the deck drinking a glass of wine. And the husband comes out with a newspaper, sits down, starts to read. She says, I love you. I love you so much. Uh -huh. I don't think I could make it through a day without you. He puts out the newspaper and says, Is that you talking or is that the wine talking? She says, It's me talking to the wine. <laughs> <laughs> It was a joke. A joke. There was a, a a documentary a million years ago that was made by the daughter of one of those classic 
Bob Hope writers, uh, your show of show writers. I was I'm like mm -hmm. Larry Gelbar's daughter or some, one of those guys or Hal's, what's his name? And it was that it was all those old guys sitting at either Cantor's or one of those delicatessens in Los Angeles, where it's like Jan Murray and and Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner, that whole gang sitting there having lunch. And right. it was one one Protestant guy who was probably 20 years younger than any of them, but he was like the youngest writer on MASH. And he told a joke. And I've been telling it ever since, and it very rarely gets a big laugh. But I'm like, you know what? If it's good enough for that table, it's good enough for me. A guy's walking along in Manhattan, and he sees a storefront. And in the window, there's three watches. And he goes in, and he says, the guy behind the counter, I think I want to buy that watch in the middle. The guy says, we don't sell watches in here. We do circumcisions. And he says, why do you got watches in the window? The guy says, what would you put in the window? <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that joke. That's a great joke. I never heard that. I love it. Uh, my, fr my friend just wrote across the screen, Jackie is on fire tonight. He thinks you're on wow. fire. The joke. You are the joke man tonight. That's good. I, I'm. I got a headache. So you're doing. You're doing really wonderful here. By the way, speaking of jokes, I, a friend. I, I went to my friend. I said, "Hey, is it rape if it was with your wife?" And he says, "I don't think so." And I said, "What a relief! I thought you'd be mad at me." <laughs> uh, Manny's back. So listen, let me bring on uh, Dennis Miller. Wants to do it. So John, I'll drop you down here. I sent man t-shirt. You see the size of the t-shirt I sent him? No, but Manny's Manny's going LOL here. He's giving us. I'm getting the comments up there. He's laughing, having a good time. Uh, Frank Paris is saying he's got to get out of here. I don't know if it fit him. Oh, really? He's he is a big guy. He's a really big guy. He's Too nice. bad he's got. A, everyone's got. Everyone has to run. They all got to run. So, um, what, what did Arlene say? John, you're not you're, you're not a Jewish wife. You don't know me. You don't know me, Arlene. So uh, I have here. Let's see who's wants to come in. Eric, I'm going to try it one more time. You're, once again, you're muted. If you want to come in and tell your joke, now is the time. Let's see, Eric. Are you there? Can you unmute and come in? He I don't know. Now I'm dying to find out who Eric really is. I want right, to know so who Bernie he is. and Sylvia. Bernie and Sylvia are out to dinner. And Bernie says, Sylvia, it's your 25th anniversary. What do you want? A Rolls Royce? A diamond ring? A mink court? She says, Bernie... I want a divorce. He says, I wasn't planning on spending that much. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Here is Daniel. Are you ready, Daniel? I hope you have a joke. Stump Jackie or me. Actually, it's more Jackie than me. He knows much more than I do. Here wait, a minute, wait a minute. I'm lost here. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. In Canada, is there any moose around? This is, only, this is the only guy that stays in his apartment and wears a hat and sunglasses. Hold on, I got another I got another station on. Hold on. Yeah, please lower your volume. Hold on. In Canada? Is there any moose around? Oh my god. Okay. This is the only guy that stays All right. As soon as you as soon as you unmute yourself, I'll bring you back up. Here's Tugboat Manny from last week. Come on, Tugboat, give us a good joke. Here there he is. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. Holy mackerel! Listen, you want when you you want to you, you want to do a far view. I, all I see is cheeks over there. Oh my god! It looks like you would eat nuts. <laughs> there you go. That's better. Job of the comedian. <laughs> Jackie, thank you for my T-shirt, and thank he you for it. letting me on, John. Oh, my pleasure. How are you? So I, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I I got a new joke that I wrote. Uh, Wait a um, minute. How could you not wear the fucking T-shirt? What kind of prick are you? How could you not have the T-shirt on? <laughs> He's froze. I stumped him. <laughs> you stumped him. You stuck him. I'm kidding, Manny. Manny, I'm no, kidding. He, he's total. He's digitized now. Oh. Look at that. Oh wait, he's back. All right, we'll All try right. one more time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Someone tried to call me. You know, it's tough being a famous comedian, as you guys know. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Eight o'clock Memorial Day. We're sitting there talking to you. That's, 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 that's what we're doing. <laughs> Oh, I got a Memorial man. Day parade joke for you. It's a Memorial <laughs> Day parade, right? So look, and, I, I, I wrote a, I wrote a, two drunks. I wrote a couple. Shut the fuck up. There's two <laughs> drunks standing there watching more Memorial Day parade, and 
right next to him is an old soggy mattress that somebody put out for the garbage. Okay. And as the ladies' brigade, the blue hair, the old ladies come marching sure. by, just as one of the drunks drops his lit cigarette by accident into the damp mattress. Okay. And it starts to smolder. Right. <laughs> and the other drunk goes, hey, hey, you, you think maybe they're marching those ladies too fast? <laughs> <laughs> I love this. These are like you've to, you told me like three or four jokes I never heard before. I love it. All right, let's bring man. Let's bring Daniel. Let's see if Daniel's got something. Are you ready, Daniel? Let's see if we can get stuff. Did you shut that off? Oh my hey, shit! Look at that. Okay? Can you hear me? You're well over. You're over module. It's like you got to back off the mic wherever your mic is. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Hit us up, Daniel. Go ahead. This is Daniel Miller from Europe in the past. Uh, where in Northern Canada? What, what town Quebec. again? How in Quebec? Oh wow! Well, yeah. How's the weather up there? That's nice. Yeah, Come on, it's it's it was nice and warm. Pardon no. me. Hit, hit us with the joke. Okay, Alexa, tell me, tell me about Jackie Martling. Hmm. I don't know that one. Huh? She don't know you, Alexa. Tell Jackie a dirty joke. What has eight wheels and flies? A garbage truck. You see, now, that's what, what I got to put up with. Those are the jokes I got to put up with. Say, Alexa, play Jackie Martling. Alexa, play Jackie Martling. I can't find songs by Jackie Martling. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It works. It usually works, Jackie. I know it. We've works done it. Me. Works for me, too. Uh, all right, me... say, Alexa, play And I'm Thinking About You by Jackie Martling. Alexa, you go to the site. Play and I'm thinking about you by Jackie Martling. I can't find anthem thinking about you by Jackie Martling. You must have a shitty plan. I'm not. Maybe it's, maybe Canada's got me. Uh, <laughs> Band. Possible. Yeah, that's bizarre. Hey, I I got no jokes. Uh, I can't. I I don't retain jokes. I How know I know them when I hear them, but I, I just can't retain them. Daniel, you stalk so, comedians your whole life. You have no joke. A little kid catches his father jerking off. He says, Pop, what are you doing? He says, something you're going to be doing very soon. And the kid says, really? He says, yeah, my, my arm's getting tired. <laughs> um, I love it. Well, thank you, Daniel. Uh, yeah, thank you. Did, did you, hey, get you did get my message. I sent you a T-shirt. All right, I can't wait to get it. Uh, it's gonna sorry. take a while. It's gonna sorry. take a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't get there, you work for the post office. Make it happen. Yeah, That's... yeah. Here I am sending T-shirts to a place that won't even play my Alexa. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes I'm doing radio shows and I, and I, they ask me, "What do you want to plug?" And I say, "Oh, you know, if all you gotta do is say Alexa, play Jackie Martley," and all of a sudden she starts. She starts in because she's right there in the same room. Right, know? right. That's hilarious. But for something, maybe, I don't know what's going on in Canada with that. That doesn't make any sense because it's uh, international. It's not just localized. It's but you know what? Unless maybe they yanked it in the last week or so. I haven't done it in a while. Uh, you know. When's the last time you yanked it? So, listen, I got we have more people in the chat here. Let me just pull them up. There's a lot of people like kind of come, coming up here, uh, coming on, all asking questions. Okay. Oh, what, people ask me to link to come on live. Here's one question. While I go pull up the link, I'll pull it. You, you want to answer that question, if you will? I'm I'm talking like I always do. Is, every, yeah. is everybody having trouble hearing me? This is the first person to complain, right? Yeah, it's Arlene. She's complaining. She's not complaining. I, I'm hearing you fine. Arlene, am, is, am I a lot lower than John? I, I don't have any way of monitoring it, so I have to just go by you, John. Yeah, you sound fine to me, but uh, Daniel was exceptionally loud. He was like uh, crazy loud. So, all right, Brian wanted to come in. I gave him the link as well. Arlene, and... I, I apologize, but uh, I don't know what to, uh, you know. Here's a guy. This is guy Stephen Keller wants a, a T-shirt. So in order to get a T-shirt, we're gonna we'd have to give you him the link. Email just... me. This goes for anybody. You got to email me and plead your case. Plead your case. Well, these people, these people. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, somebody else said that's tough to hear you. All right. So we'll have to raise that up a little bit on the next show. That will make sure it's nice and loud. Uh, once again, Jackie. Well, I'm we just going. I'm just going by. All right. I just moved closer. Ask him if that. You know. That of course, the closer I get, the older I get. But is that better? <laughs> I mean, is the microphone here? Is the microphone here? I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is either. I think it's more as you go. Actually, it's not changing very much as you move around. That's what I'm noticing. But yeah, people do say that you're a little bit low. Next time we'll. Better I'm, like I'm, this? Oh, yeah, that's much louder. But then also, I'm speaking to your nose, <laughs> which is which is kind of funny. Not bad. Ah, here's somebody else. They said they couldn't hear. Yeah. Hi, guys. Can't hear Jackie well. How do you like that? Okay. And this, and then Sandy's going, I hear him fine. Maybe you guys have to raise the volume on their, on the, on their stuff. That's what, there you go. In the meantime, Manny, you came back. You want to, you wanted to come back. Oh, there, there is Manny. Th I tell you, this is not, Whoa. this is. <laughs> I, I can't get used to the size of this guy. It, but it's, it's from the bottom up. It's like, it's like that. I, I thought I had a vagina coming over. Here. All right. Man, you got a joke coming up there or what? Yeah, I, I can't hear. We can't hear Jackie, though. Like some of us can hear. I don't know you, what this show is, but, but some, certainly like I can't hear him right now. <laughs> you can't hear him right now. I can't hear him right now. I hear you fine, Jackie. I hear everything fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. right, well, what yeah, I don't hear. Him but what? But the worst one I think, yet is Charlie I don't, saying I was upside down. I wanted you know, to do so my joke with both much, of you. I think everybody's for you, John. Is different. Right. You know. Jack, he wants to tell us his joke. So let go ahead, hit hit it up. Uh, well, there he's he's gone. Oh, there he's back again. Now you're muted uh, yourself, tugboat. He now he's telling the joke while he's muted. That is bizarro. <clears throat> wow. Uh, well, that's this is. Hey, this is the part that happens. T tugboat, you're gonna have to go fix it because right now you're muted. So fix that. All right, come... tugboat. I got to interrupt with a few jokes. So that's right. Tugboat. We'll hit it up. Go ahead, Jackie. An old couple's in the living room. The wife turns to the husband and says, let's go upstairs and fuck. He says, I, I don't know if I could do both. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very cold winter's night. And three homeless guys huddle up close to stay warm. And they wake up in the morning and the guy on the left says, I had a dream somebody was pulling on my dick. And the guy on the right says, I had a dream somebody was pulling on my dick. And the guy in the middle says, I had a dream I went skiing. <laughs> 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 oh look at this good 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 so so two girls are at the water fountain at work and the first girl says i got a terrible sore throat and the other girl says you know whenever i have a sore throat i just go home and give my husband a blow job and it clears it right up you should try it next day at work they're at the water fountain the first girl says i tried it and it worked like a charm you know your husband couldn't believe it was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at this. I can hear just fine. Thank you, Gary Horlick. It really depends on the device that these people are probably listening to, I would imagine. I am a little bit louder than you, though, because it's coming through me first, though. But that's that's all That's all good. Hey, um, let me ask a you guy, this. A guy's on the elevator. A guy's on the elevator with a big, fat broad. He says, lady, can I smell your snatch? And she says, no. He says, then it must be your feet. <laughs> oh, that's a little dirty. I love the kid, it. The kid, the kid's sitting at the kitchen table and he says, Ma, I'm gay. And she says, Does that mean you suck men's cocks? He says, Yep. She says, Don't ever complain about my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was great. It's beautiful. It's great. I love those jokes. Now look, they see now. I live for the jokes. Better now, Jackie. Better now. People saying it's better. I didn't. I don't think I. I you know what? I moved up a uh, uh, snatch here. You know. Oh, that's perfect. I'm going to make you big again because I'm going to go give people a link. People are asking if they want to come in. I'm going to go pop it up. Get yeah, it's all you. It's it's all you at this moment. Go ahead. Oh no! Oh no! So a couple wakes up. A couple wakes up one morning. The guy says to his wife, "What a party I went to last night right here in the neighborhood. Good food, good people, good conversation, and the best thing of all, they had a golden toilet." She says, you're crazy. There's no such thing as a golden toilet. She says, I'm telling you, they had a golden toilet. Come on. And they go to the house where the party was, and they knock on the door, and a lady answers. She says, excuse me, will you show my wife the golden toilet? She turns and says, hey, Harry, here's the guy who's shitting your tuba. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Great job.
jokes, one of the great jokes of all time. It, it actually is. I, I think I've heard it a couple different ways, but I love it. Uh, so this guy, they're telling me that the coming in is not working. I don't know. The clicking is not working. Maybe it's your device. I can't tell you. There's other people able to come in. And by the way, and once again, here is the stoic Charlie Fisher. <laughs> he comes I love and him. Goes. I love him. He's just sitting there like he, he looks like he's a principal, like we're not paying attention. <laughs> It's all good. What 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 is your plans uh, for this week now with this COVID? What are you doing this whole week? Hanging out? Ha what are you doing? Are you talking to me? Yeah. <clears throat> I. You know what? I. It's crazy because the days fill up, and I don't. You know, I do a lot of the. I. I, I wind up doing a plug, but cameo dot com slash Jackie Martling. I do you know like one or two a day, sometimes three, sometimes five. They're great. It's like fifty bucks. And it's so funny. People are like, how come they, how, how, what makes Southern John worth more than you? I said, it's got nothing to do with us. You get to set your own price, you know, leave uh -huh. my wife out of this. I make the sandwiches in my house. Remember that? Show? <laughs> right, right, but right. It's like, but like for 50 bucks. So I wind up doing a few of those and I do some of these zoom conventions where people pay me right. to sit in, but you know, you putz around, you wind up doing stuff you would never get to, you know, and then you, you, you go through some old stuff and you find an old picture. It makes you think of somebody. And then you, you wind up ordering this book and it, it's crazy how the time fills and, up. And, 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 I don't do anything. We don't go anywhere. You know, if we, if we get in the car and go to the store, it's like, Whoa, outing, outing. Here we you go. feel human. You feel yeah. human at that point. But let me ask you this. When you, you, when you, doesn't it feel like since this whole thing happened that we're all sitting at, like we're, we're filling our lives with things, making, we're actually busy but you're not actually out doing the shows live like we were before. Usually we're spending our time in a car, driving and flying. You know, you know what we're doing, John? No. We're living our lives. For the first time. Usually uh, your life is on hold, but, you know, everything is, I'll get to it. First, I got to, you know, I got to get my act together. I got to get gas in the car, but, but, but you know, and, and you wind up living so much of your life is the time between shows. You know, it's like, oh boy, you're that not living your life. Line. It's like, uh, what this is what I'm doing until I do my show, which is, you know. And and by the I way, think Seinfeld, I think Seinfeld's new show was called like 23 Hours Off or 23 Hours to Kill or something, which is like that. That's a comedian's life, the 23 hours between shows, you know. And I, I do consider our lives the hours between shows. That's the living time. And yet most of it's travel. Greg just said something so funny. Stuttering John gets paid by the syllable. That's very oh, that's clever. Great. That's, that's great. Very, definitely very clear. Nice and clear. You, know you know about the stuttering guy that gets the job as a Bible salesman? And the... Uh, Oh, and his first day, he sells 500 Bibles. No, no, no. He sells 500 Bibles, and he comes back, and the boss says, how did you sell 500 Bibles? And the stuttering guy says, uh -huh. he's, 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 he's easy. They just go to the door and knock on the, the door, and when they answer, I say, you want to buy, you want to buy, buy, you want to buy. But you want to how did you sell buy a Bible or do you want me to read it to you? <laughs> <laughs> I never heard you know about I never the guy. Heard. The guy walks in the doctor's office and this guy's sitting there and he says, What are you doing here? And the guy says, I got a prostate problem. He says, What you got a prostate problem? What's that? He says, I piss like you talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I was thinking of one of your jokes this morning, I, and I don't know if you could do it here about the, the patent leather shoes. It's so long, but I love it. Should it, do it for the people? I, it, a, guy, so a guy gets a new job. A guy, this a guy actually told me this on the joke hunt. I had never heard it before, and I fell down. And he thought I was jacking him off. He, he thought, Jackie, it was so nice for you to pretend you never heard of it. I never heard it before. A guy gets a new job, so to celebrate, he gets a new suit and a pair of shiny new black patent leather shoes. And he goes to a dance and asks a girl to dance. He says, you know, I like a girl who wears plaid undies. She says, how do you know I'm wearing plaid undies? He says, I saw the reflection in my shiny new black patent leather shoes. <laughs> yes, another girl dances. You know, I like a girl who wears polka dot panties. She says, how do you know I'm wearing polka dot panties? She says, I saw the reflection in my shiny new black 
patent leather shoes. Yes, another girl dance. He says, what do you got on under that dress? She says, nothing. He says, Phew. I thought I had a crack in my shiny new black patent leather shoes. <laughs> <laughs> You no, know, it's a great joke, and, I, and I've seen you do it on stage so many times, and and you back up and take your time with it and really build it through. It's just a, here you also got us your head right here. We can't see the whole body language, but it's very funny, very funny. A Class. little little old lady goes into a sex shop. A little old lady goes to the sex shop. She says, "Where are all the dildos?" The guy says, "They're on the wall, lady." She says, "I'll take a red one." He says, "No, lady." <laughs> The dildos are on the wall next to the fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. They're all saying you're on fire, Jackie. You're on fire tonight. That's what we're uh, claiming. But listen, when we want to stop the show, we put Stoic Charlie on for a second. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so what do you think about going to happen with us? When are we going back out and start working like physically in front of real people? What do you think is happening? When, when are we going out? You know... <clears throat> I, th I don't know about you, but in the back of my mind, and I hope in the back of we're all thinking, you know what? All of a sudden, they're just going to come up with this great vaccine, mm -hmm. and everybody's going to eventually get vac vaccinated, and it's going to be like like it was a nightmare, just like polio like, was a nightmare. Like VD like, was. You know, um, <clears throat> how long it'll be, I mean, I don't think anybody's even prepared for what might happen. And I don't. I don't want to get serious, but what what's going to happen if they do come up with a vaccination? It's going to go crazy. It's going to go nuts. Who gets it? The priorities, because obviously they're not going to have three hundred million at the same time, and you know it's going to be you get it and you die, and you get it. You know, so it's going to be a, a shit show. I think it's just the opposite, though. I think all of a sudden, if a bunch of people, if it comes out, it, again, it won't be available as quickly for everybody. But once it comes out and people start having this confidence and feeling good. You and I will be on fire everywhere because now everyone's going to want to come out more oh, than they're ever. Gonna be, oh, they're they're in. Gonna be hungry as shit, right? Know? And we'll we'll turn them upside down and shake them, squeeze them. Yeah, down. I, I can't <laughs> wait. And Judd Dunn's hey, going. How, how do you how do you ditch a Jewish cop? How do you ditch a Jewish cop? Tell me. Drive through a toll booth. <laughs> <laughs> I had done a joke uh, a while back. It was during the holidays where uh, uh, I was online at, after a show, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting at the buffet for a holiday party, and I'm, I'm all of a sudden picking up everything. And there's an Orthodox guy behind me, and he goes, what is that? And I said, oh, it's, it's a sausage and peppers. It's delicious. He goes, I can't eat it. I'm Jewish. I said, doesn't worry. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, that never gets old to me. That shit never gets old to me. <laughs> So crazy. Uh, people all say hello to each other. This goes Judd Dunn's. I don't know where this guy's from, but he's saying off our rockers. Judd Dunn. From you know him? South? I don't know. We'll ask him in the chat in the chat here. We'll find out in a second. He looks familiar. Uh, or, or maybe Judd Dunn. That might have been governor. No, it would have been before uh, before Cinnamon. No, I think that's one of the guys. We had a band in the 70s. We, we drove around in 1955, bright yellow Cadillac hearse. Get out of here. And we always had pot and we always had booze and always had underage girls and we never got stopped. The cops must have thought they wouldn't dare fuck up in that thing, you know. Say, say it now. Say it now, Jackie. When it happens that when the, our time ends, you want me to have that same hearse take you back? <clears throat> yes. You know, it, of course, of course, we got in an accident and that was the end of that. But holy Christ. Oh you know what? I, I got to get this down so that when you and me are doing this, I can click and the picture because i got the picture all the stuff you just give me the around. picture and i can put it up i have it right i mean as a matter of fact you know i was telling you earlier uh by the way he, this is really nice hey jeff norris just said love both you peasy and jack you hey, know jeff. jeff how you doing now that guy i know, I know he's a great guy. comic great comic I'm, and i miss and haven't seen him in quite a while great great guy uh but you know if you want i could actually pull up the pictures like for instance as you know uh, the guy who books the talent for the shows that I'm doing here online is John Galasso. And John is, you and I are both in his book and his movie. And it's, see, I can pull it right up. It's called A Laugh, A Smile, A Grin, and A Laugh. That's life. And uh, 
we're all in there. All the comics are in this book, and it's uh, a wonderful yeah, book. He's a great character. He actually came to Jokeland. I, I, I'm, I think I might have even made a stake for him, but if I didn't, we, I know we, we at least we hung out on the porch and had a lot of laughs. He's a very good guy. Very good great guy. guy. And and it, and he's been booking all the talent for my show. So I, I, you know, we have a bunch of other shows coming up as well. And uh, this is a great book. And the website on that is excellent too. If this is, you know, this is interesting too because you, you're, you're here at Cameo. If people want to speak to you and you know and get you to come in, it's the greatest thing. It's the greatest thing. And I and there's a whole other thing called Meat Hook, which cameo is just John. Uh, your uncle wanted me to say happy birthday, and he said you like Italian jokes, so here's an Italian joke. You know, uh, what we what would you call an Italian slum? A spaghetto. A spaghetto. <laughs> Stuff like that. But Meat Hook is different. It's like if if a fan books it. You actually get on the phone with them one on one, like a like a Facebook Live call. Really, really. And, and you know, like with me, they could say, "Jackie, uh, I would love to hear you tell such and such a joke." Or you, my uncle told me a joke thirty years ago. And you wouldn't believe how many people email me and say, "My uncle told me a joke, and my father told me a joke, and it was something about a nun." And they give me a little bit of the guts, and I can usually come up with it, and it freaks them out. So it's fun. Mm-hmm. So that's meathook.com and cameo.com and. Uh, and I didn't know about actually making some money doing these things, you know. I, I'm here, yeah. And look, Jeff had some really nice things this year. Jackie, you are one of my biggest inspirations in comedy. Always a pleasure and gift sharing a stage with you. Peasy, your friendship is gold. That's so nice. Uh, we have to go give this guy a hand job right after we, we get I was just going to say, here. Jeff, you know, the only thing better would be a blow job. And listen, <laughs> the times are hard. I will take it from you. You don't even have to wear a wig. <laughs> <laughs> Why, well, he generally doesn't even wear a wig? I think he does. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, generally. And so there, Colosso thanked us as well. There, There's Johnny Colosso. There he is. He just, uh, hey, he just, he just hooked me up. Uh, we have uh, Butch Patrick coming in on Friday to do it. That's going to be the, from the months. I can't wait to talk to that guy. It'll be blessed. Oh, you know who I met last year at a, at a film festival? And I must be the only guy in the world that doesn't Who's that? know the scene and doesn't know the movie. The kid that got his tongue stuck to a flagpole. In the movie, you mean? The the, the, it, the classic the, Christmas the movie? Christmas movie? Yeah. I have no, I've never seen the movie. And I must be the only person in the world. And I guess he's internationally famous for his tongue being stuck to the pole. And everybody <laughs> in my family is like, how could you not know that, Uncle Jackie? I said, well, the guy's my pal now. He, That's hilarious. A guy. By the way, you know, great response. Great response from Jeff Norris about uh, giving hand hand job of going down. He's allergic to shrimp. Ah, uh, very good, very good. You should be a comic. You certainly yeah, should be a speller. There you go. Hey, by the way, I don't know if you know this guy up here. Uh, Judd Dunn is saying, I don't know what this is supposed to relative. Mr. Polanski went down on Dansky. What is that relative to you for? There was a song that I used to sing. My brother and my cousin wrote the song with Michael Keaton. You know, the actor? Of course, from Pittsburgh. He was born and raised in Pittsburgh. Well, yeah, they were, in, they were in Mexico for a summer. And uh-huh. they wrote the song, Mr. Polanski went down to the dance ski with nothing on but his shoes. I didn't know that. I finished the song. And I, when I started out, I actually, I got, I got the picture. When I started out, before I was a comic in my band, it was like there was a, a piece of cardboard that said Polanski. And then with a string tied to the next one said Dansky. And then there was a string shoes. And I would have somebody come up on the stage and point as we got... Mr. Polanski went down to the dance ski with nothing on but his shoes. And the audience would sing along and go berserk to it. And when was Mr. this? Polanski, like, Mr. Polanski went period? down to the dance ski with nothing on but his shoes. Uh, along, came a, along came a floozy. She called herself Susie, said, Polanski, you got nothing to lose. So now wow. Mr. Polanski was down at the dance ski, lonely, not even his shoes. We're raising a rumpus. At the Knights of Columbus, and Polanski's got none, has lost all his shoes. And then the whole crowd, you got nothing to lose. You got Holy. It. It, was, it was just a drunken anthem. And I, that must have been from Neptune's South. How do you remember? You, it's like you're pulling it out of your head, like per, like verbatim. Well, but this, this is my band. I was in a band for the entire set, a two man band in the 70s. We, we were so popular and so fun. And Nobody has any idea except for Judd Dunn. Nobody knows who. The fuck <laughs> now, what did you I play? Still, you know what? I still, Guitar? Holy shit! Hold on. Uh oh, I see your ass. 
Uh oh. Judd Dunn says it's the cinnamon. Judd Dunn, where are you from, too? That's enough. Now, Jackie's off camera. By the way, that's part of the show. I've been there. This is part of the show. You, you don't know how organized Jackie is. Jackie has everything organized in uh, actual. Uh, but I have that stupid Polanski Dansky. <laughs> it used to be hanging in here. It's, it, it freaks people out when I have it. It freaks them out. I know you. You'll be texting me later showing me what you and, have written. And, and, and it was not a good bit. It was horrible. Really? What, what did you play as an instrument? You played the uh, guitar? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We were and by the way, fun. We were just, for a, fun. just for a minute of stoic, uh, stoicness. Oh, there you go. That's the Hearst? Yeah, I kind of see. Yeah, holy. That, oh, my, man, that's like, that brings me right back to like the, uh, oh, H.R. Puffin stuff and uh, way back. Wow. Wow. Long time ago. Here's, here's the color. Yeah, banana yellow. Yeah, taxi cab yellow. It was 1955. It was huge. Immense. Reminds me of like Marty Croft. Remember like Marty Croft, all the day glow colors of 1960s right, and right, 70s. Exactly, exactly. Great. Uh, oh, my God. Axel J. How are you, Axel J? Everyone's saying hello to everybody there. Hiya, hiya, hiya. Hi. Uh, so, is Galasso uh, in here? Hi, John. John. John is here. He is in, the only people I can pull up right now is Danny Miller and Charlie Fisher. We, when I go for the stoic look, I pull in Charlie. <laughs> if if I want, I want the north North America, the Northern American cat. You got this crazy man up there. <laughs> uh, so a guy goes in a bar, and is a beautiful blonde barmaid, and behind uh -huh. her is a sign: cheese sandwich five dollars, chicken sandwich seven dollars, hand job fifty dollars. And he says to the blonde, are you the one that gives the hand jobs? She says, yep. He says, wash your hands. Get me a cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. my favorite joke. You know what I always say to my audience? I say, if you don't think that joke's funny, I don't care about it. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> don't give a shit. Hey, guess who else is here? It's like a litmus. You know, there's certain litmus jokes. You know what I mean? Joey Gay is in here, too. I haven't seen. Hello, Joey Gay. Wow, I haven't heard that name in a million years. Hi, Joey. How the hell are you? That that's from way that's like back in dice days, right? And then yeah, I haven't heard of I well, I actually work with him I once in Johnny Hour. and Hot Tub Johnny and all those characters. I haven't seen I, we worked together I think at Staten Island Comedy Club uh once. He says he's great, he's doing he's doing good. I haven't seen him yeah, forever. This guy, you can't take his word for it, you know him. <laughs> We're all doing great. We're all good. He's telling it's nice to see you, fellas. Who calls you? I feel like I'm a hey. We're nice to see you, fellas. It's like a yeah, 19. At least he didn't spell it E R S. You know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, correct. It's nice. He could come. You could come in too if they want. You, you could always uh, see the link. I'll put the link in the in the description one more time over there because we're getting close to the end here. We're at 49 minutes already, Jackie, and we haven't really we haven't really brought people into stump us. Nobody's really well, coming. Right, in so see, ask them if ask people if they got a joke. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for anybody who want to come up and tell a joke or a one-two punch. And if we could figure out the punchline, great. And if not, we'll send you a T-shirt. I have actually a, a great book here with Johnny Galasso's book called The Smile, The Grin, and That's Life. Or I, you have T-shirts. I know you have a whole big bag of T-shirts up there from last time, right? I got, I got. you know what? I didn't realize I got a billion T-shirts left downstairs. A I billion. Got, I got a whole box full of medium. And I got Andy dolls, little Andy dolls that say rude things. Boy, are you desperate? I've been on the so, I, uh, speaking of what Joey said, I'll come in. I, I tell you what, Joey, I'll give you the link right now. And uh, Jackie, you want to do another joke? And I'll give Joey this link. Sure. All right, hang on. I'm bringing you up. I'm making you really large. Are you ready? Here you are. You're really big. All right, you're big. So a lady goes in a drugstore and goes up to the pharmacist and says, I need to buy some cyanide to kill my husband. And I said, lady, I can't sell you the cyanide to kill your husband. You'll go to jail. I'll go to jail. You're crazy. She reaches her purse and takes out a picture and hands it to the pharmacist. It's a picture of her husband fucking the pharmacist's wife. And the pharmacist says, you didn't tell me you had a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's reminded me of take the poison. Take the poison. <laughs> two flies. Two flies land on a piece of shit. And the first one lifts his leg and... <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. I'm trying to eat. Ah, <laughs> come good. on. It's just so fun. That's oh, so here's fun. somebody else saying hello. Julie Angelina. 
Hello, Julie Angelina. Good day. Good day. Does that mean she's from Australia? I, I don't know, Julie. Are you from Australia? Good day. Sounds either that or she doesn't have a spell. Yeah. And uh, Judd Dunn is saying uh, Timmy and Tot Tones with the Rob Bartlett. Wow, Bar that, go, that goes way back. Holy How God. old is this Judd? So, so that that must have been just when the crossover between the brokerage became uh, – I, I started booking comedy into the brokerage, and then I started booking comedy at Governor's. But I think I, – I used to have – the guys used to come and do comedy at my, at my gigs. I played guitar and sat in, I sat in my stool with a, my, with a tambourine on my foot and played my own songs and told jokes. And when I first met the comics in 1978, like Eddie Murphy and Dave Hawthorne, right. and Rob Bartlett and Rob, Bob Nelson and Minervini and Myers, you know, on any given night, two or three of them would come to my gig because there was no place to get up and do any time. And I would let them get up and do time. That's why I got like pictures of Minervini with the Mr. D Polanski Dansky sign hanging behind him. God. It was crazy, crazy. And t Timmy and the Tartones, the Tartones never did it at at my gigs, because that was like a year later. But Bartlett had the, had the whole thing. He, you know, I, I actually recorded a Timmy and the Tartones song. I got a tape somewhere of Bartlett and the Tartones. Get out of here. What's going on with Bartlett to, uh, today, you know? Uh, you know, I haven't seen him in a while, and somebody asked me how to get a hold of him because he wanted to, he wanted to book a show with, like, with like me and uh, Mitch Fattel, who used to be... Yeah, great act from Jersey. Yeah. In turn. And now I, he's a great comic. I, I mean, I He's a great him. comic. He always, he, the character's really funny. By the way, response, Natalie Mayer, one of our Friars friends from the Friars, very I funny. Very funny. My niece, my beautiful niece that has the nine-month-old nine twins, worked for Natalie for a while. Ah, uh, she's a doll. Yeah. Big animal lover, too. Loves animals. And by the way, uh, yes. That's why she likes us. Yeah, because we're animals. <laughs> well, apparently, and, this, and Greg is saying his Uncle Pat Stark bartended at Governor's. Oh, okay. I, I remember Pat very well. Strange, very strange time. Uh, by the way, I do have Steve Kellis coming up. Uh, bringing up Steve, we finally have somebody to. We're, we're, not, we're saving so much money in products sending out. We're not saying anything out. It's already the show's almost over. We're not saying there's Steve. Hello, Steve. Hey, hey, brothers. How you doing? He's over modulated too. Look at that. Oh, uh, shall I back off? Yeah, it was fine. Good. How you doing, Steve? Better? Hey, Good. man. You know, I just came from Atlantic City. They did a uh, the first concert today. There was a comedian involved too. We did the the uh, like a drive-in type of thing with all the vehicles. Uh huh. It actually worked out better than I thought. How how many people showed up for this, and who were the comics? The I did the comic. Her name is in my pocket. I don't remember, but I tell you what, comics are very not funny people because. I didn't realize she's a lesbian, which doesn't matter. Except hey, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That, it that's, matters that's the when it comes to being funny. You know why God made lesbians, right? Why is that? So we can watch them. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I'm talking to the comic. <laughs> I'm talking to the comic after her set. And uh, I look over to somebody that's like Indian style on the pavement. And I said, who invited Andy Dick? And it turned out to be one of her friends because three minutes later they were juggling together. And the funny thing was, she didn't laugh at all. She looked at me pretty mean. <laughs> Why really? are Indians what, what, not what, funny? What's Indian style mean? What's that? What do you mean what? sitting Indian style? Do you know what that means, John? What is it? Indian, Indian style to me means uh, legs. legs folded. Yeah. Legs folded. Yeah. I thought, but I thought everybody's in cars. Oh, no. Well, we broke the law. <laughs> oh, that, now that's funny. You know what <laughs> well, you know something, Jackie. I want a T-shirt to promote you at these gigs, but I want to well, win you gotta one. Get a haircut and get funnier. No, Actually, no, no, no. Why? You jealous? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Joe Flynn at AOL dot com. At this at this uh, show today, there was a, a homeless woman from Atlantic City that was kind of squatting at the concert. And as she walked by, she tripped. What do you call her? A woman that was juggling? No, no, no. Just a homeless woman that was trying to enjoy the show for free. And she tripped? Yes. What do you call her? Down on her face. 
Uh, hold down. Uh, I need an extra large shirt. <laughs> well, you better come up with a joke then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was all right. What do you, it's okay. what do you say? What do you say if you see two homeless people making out? What? Get a box. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I'm stealing that one. You guys remember it. What, what does it mean when lesbians make love? Don't mean dick. <laughs> uh, what's an, by the way, open, what's an open can of tuna fish in a lesbian's apartment? Hmm. Potpourri. <laughs> <laughs> I, love them all. I love them all. Oh, I love see, all. see, this is a winning segment. It's a winning segment. I, he deserves a T-shirt, it's Jack. Rude. It's very rude. By the way, if you really want to get stoic, there's Charlie Fisher giving us the dirty looks. <laughs> tell, tell him. So Wait, you know, he, got, he comes and goes like Mr. Mitzelpick. <laughs> yeah. Hey, know. Jackie, I first saw you at Rascals in West Orange back in the day. So it's been a lot of you fun, a lot of years. Back in the day. What fucking day are they talking about? What? It was a Saturday. Back in the day, I was in kindergarten. Back in the day, I was in high school. Back in the day, that was a very, very busy day. Back in the day, I was a medium, but I need an extra large now. You were never a medium, Keller. <laughs> Keller's a big guy. Actually, he's a good guy. He lives in South Jersey, though, right? All the way south, right? There you well, go. Yeah, but I was born in, in uh, Jersey City. Email your – nobody cares. Emails, email me your address, jokeland at AOL.com. And give him the, the large T-shirt with the, with, the, with the hair. And by the, thank you, Steve Keller. That's really good. By the way, Melvin George is in here too. We know Melvin George. You guys are wild. Melvin, you could come in and say – Melvin, I don't think Jim is a joke guy. You, he's more of a, a good material-based comic. He's a, he's a very funny character. Good guy. Great, great comic. I put the link in, in there if you want to come in. It's fine by me. If, we want to get, if you want to have a moment of, of silence – <laughs> uh, tell so J Natalie's going. Tell us more, Jackie. Tell us more. See that people liking the jokes. That's what. It, and by the way, we only have two minutes left before we have to close this all up. So we're almost there at the end, Jackie. We have to end off on a on a high, I guess. So uh, a guy puts a paper bag over his head and grabs a gun and he comes into a sperm bank. And the receptionist says, no, no, it's not a regular bank. It's a sperm bank. He says, I know what it is. Open that refrigerator. And she opens the refrigerator. He says, take out one of the bottles. She takes out one of the bottles. He says, take off the cap. She takes off the cap. He says, now drink it down. And she drinks it down. And he takes off the bag. It's her husband. He says, see, it ain't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. Love it, love it, love it. It's a great. Actually, you know something? People can't come in because I had people, once the studio, I, have to, I got to dump these guys from the studio, a few people, in order to get new people to come in. I'm sorry, Charlie Fisher. I'm dumping you guys out of there because nobody else could come in if you guys are already in there at the bottom. Uh, that is that is a great joke. Jackie, so again, once again, uh, Oh, there's one joke. Okay, here we go. Where do lesbians meet each other? At the liquor store. <laughs> I like the lesbian joke. Lesbian jokes have always been fun. I, I, Natalie, I, Meyer, I, Natalie Meyer, you should buy a couple Cameo.coms and send some jokes to your friends. You're rich. Come on, loosen the fuck up. That's you right. That, You're doing Pop nothing. it up. Where do you or get that? Right here. Yeah, Cameo.com slash Jackie Marlin. They're, they're really fun to do. They really are you. Some guy today said, you know, uh, my friend isn't Jewish, but he's the cheapest guy in the world. So tell him some Jewish jokes. He's a mean, cranky prick. And, you know, and and you don't know whether people are just telling you that or whether they want you to include that. You know, it's very funny. You know, one, I, one, I, I got one guy, uh, our friend, our dad is turning 70 and we love him and he's your biggest fan. And it and they actually signed it. His three piece of shit sons. That's what I, <laughs> so I have to say, Harry, happy birthday from your three piece of shit sons. And it's like, it's very funny. That reminds me of that joke about the, the the three Jewish women sitting on a bench in Miami Beach. How many of those jokes are there with the three, the three women, the uh, one, two punches in Miami Beach? Yeah. And that, that's, what was that joke? The joke is the guy walks in. The guy walks over and he's wearing a long coat, black coat, and he opens it up and he's got his big penis sticking out. And the first one, she, they, all three of them are sitting there and they go, oh my God, oh my God. And the first one had had, had a, a stroke. The second one had a stroke. And then one in the middle, she couldn't even reach it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <so. laughs> I, I, like I forgot that. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs>
And two old Jewish women on the bench, and the first one says the other one, did you fart? The other one says, of course I farted. You think I always smell like this? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, it's one hour. We got to go. Till next Monday. Uh, listen, I want to tell people, follow me on Twitter, at Jackie Martling jokes every day at 4.20 p.m. And we're going to be doing this every Monday for a long time. So please, what we really want is for people to tell jokes, to call, to, to come in and come into the room and tell and us some. jokes so we can fuck around and break balls and be rude. We want this to be, you know, back and forth. Right, Johnny? Yeah, we want to go. We, we, we want us to stump us. And, if, and we're good with being stumped. That's all good. We're giving out books. We're giving out T-shirts. I'm giving out Andy dolls. And, and you know more jokes than I do. And I have a feeling that if they can stump you, they deserve that T-shirt. That's the truth. I, I, you know, the greatest joke that anybody ever stumped me with was there was this Asian girl at the Just for Last Festival. And we were doing the Nasty Show at midnight on Saturday. And I was hammering away. And I knew every joke that all the guys used to ask me and the women and this Asian girl asked me a joke and you could almost not understand her. It was almost pigeon English, but she stumped me and brought the fucking house down. She and said, I remember you telling me this. Tell us real quick before we go. What, what was it? She said, what do anniversary, toilet, and clitoris have in common? Anniversary, clitoris, have in common. Okay. And toilet. And toilet. Clitoris, anniversary, and toilet. What do they have in common? And the answer is men miss them all. <laughs> and and that got you. Johnny boy. See that you. got you. Thank you so much, Jackie. We'll see you next Monday at nine. Right? I mean, eight o'clock, brother. The time wrong, you're gonna fuck yeah, no. I got a headache today. I'm a little bit off my I'm a little bit off my game over here. You're perfect. Yeah, it's all good. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. You guys have been awesome. Ciao for now. Bye, Joy. Jackie, you're on fire. Oh, that's great. That's really attractive. <laughs> everybody,